ray of light appears in complete darkness, and the viewer sitting in a cinema hall is presented with a wonderful spectacle, visual images replacing each other, united by a common narrative. The subject, going through his unconscious imaginary memory of feeling of loss and creeped by the fear of potential lack, suddenly receives hope for pleasure, which cinema is generously ready to provide. All this magic is based on skillful manipulation of visual pleasure, especially when it comes to the Hollywood production system, whose mainstream films coded the erotic into the language of the dominant patriarchal order. It critically influenced the representation of female images and female sense of life under the gaze of a male movie camera. To make you my own. Hi everyone, my name is Caroline and I'm the founder of Film 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 Project, all information about which you can find in the description below. Today we are going to dive into the topic of feminist film critics because it skillfully uses psychoanalysis to describe and criticize patriarchal structures which are woven into the cinematic form. And particularly we will talk about the so-called male gaze and the main text where psychoanalysis is used as a tool to explain Pose the cinematic spectacle exploiting female image for male pleasure is Laura Mulvey's Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema, where she introduces the concept of a male gaze, which she also analyzes through the connection with fetishism and the unconscious of the patriarchal society. As a result, the structure of movie becomes clear. It's sharpened for obtaining a male type of pleasure, regardless of who is watching the movie. A woman or a man. Moreover, the presence of a woman in movies is more than obligatory, but not as an active character. Vice versa, her image stops all processes for the sake of moments of erotic contemplation. No doubt such moments seem to be expedient because, in general, in the entire narrative of movies, women take a passive position. They practically do not speak, do not act. They assigned only the role of accessory and beautiful picture to feed the scopophilic pleasure of male viewers. In contrast, we are witnessing an active male position. They save the world, change the course of events, and of course, without hesitation, look at the female parts of the body. And the camera, playing along with this action, demonstrates how to consider a woman as an object of sexual pleasure. It's the camera that plays a critical role here. According to the apparatus theory of Jean-Louis Baudry, we know that the primary identification of the audience is based on camera's gaze. So, in a patriarchal society where almost all places in the movie industry are occupied by men, the camera becomes a substitute for the male gaze. As a result, a mechanism for the ideological representation of the female image. I can be wearing this cast for another whole week. Well, that one week is going to cost me my best photographer. And you a big assignment. Well, where? Oh, there's no point in even talking about it. No, come on, come on, where? Cashmere. Got a coat tip from the bureau chief this morning. The place is about to go up in smoke. Uh, what did I tell you? Didn't I tell you that's the next place to watch? You did. Okay, when do I leave? Half hour, hour? With that cast on? You don't. Oh, stop sounding stuffy. I can take pictures from a jeep or a water buffalo if necessary. You're too valuable to the magazine for us to play around with. I'll send Morgan or Lamb. Morgan or Lamb, that's fine. Laura Malvi in her work leads to the radical conclusion that all classical cinema represents the dominant patriarchal viewpoint and consolidates its structures. She explains this by the fact that in the narrative of classical Hollywood films, the focus is not only on the male hero, but a priori it's assumed that the viewer will be a man or the viewer is encoded as a man. The so-called fetishistic scopophilia establishes the beauty in its physical manifestation of a woman as an object, thereby this object itself becomes the embodiment of pleasure. Accordingly, feminist resistance to the fetishization of the female image and body as a sexual object seems attractive to me. 
Nowadays, as we can see, the problem of representation of women in cinema is extremely relevant and I propose to take up what techniques at the level of visual representation Chantal Ackermann uses in her movie uh, John Dillman, 23 Commerce, Embankment, Brussels, 1080 in favor of the female gaze. But to pay attention that there is also a full article where I also examine the narrative using psychoanalytic methodology of analyzing films. So just follow the link in the description or visit our website filmfilmfilm.net. So let's get straight into it. The very title of the film refers us to an exhaustive description of the chronicle of everyday life lasting three and a half hours. Three days in the life of John Delman in her apartment in Brussels, which is a perfectly folded space for the heroine's routine. Ackerman doesn't use close-ups, aids for the dialogue, or point views. The camera in the movie is fixed and low, and the composition of the frame is frontal and symmetrical. John's understated portrayal adds to the director's formal clarity, which thus destroys the voyeuristic pleasure. The camera captures the image of the heroine as a complete one and doesn't fragment it with the help of framing, thereby freeing her from the erotic order in which certain parts of the human body are usually distinguished. In classical cinema, such a fragmentation is a kind of restrained fetishism when only separate parts of the body become significant, and such an erotic body, as it were, can never be put together. The film about Jean Dillman became a feminist movie classic that brought women to the fore. John is presented in almost every frame, which opens up space for female identity in the movie. And the form of the film cancels out the viristic way of receiving pleasure from the audience. Ackerman's idea of a concrete unfamiliar, because it's receding into the last place in classical cinema, everyday life, has become an important part in the approach to the way of presentation. And one of the most important tasks of female cinema is precisely the rethinking of not only the female image itself, but also the way it's shown in cinema. Therefore, the emphasis is shifted to working with the medium, like cinematographic apparatus, which acts as a social technology, a reflective attitude to which allows to analyze and deconstruct ideological codes rooted in representation. Thank you very much for watching, subscribe to our YouTube channel and see you next time on my playlist about cinema and psychoanalysis. Goodbye!